I wore the glass and I began to weep. I said, but that's my suit. Oh, it's, it's the way he did things that was so amusing. Because anyone else would have gotten some ragtag, bought something, yeah. dirty dirt. But he wanted something that was mine and I loved so that I would feel terrible in it. And I did. Here I was in my beautiful suit and it was ruined. So it made me feel like this. And that's how I was at the end uh, of the picture. And this compounded with the fact that the man who played Jack the Ripper was someone that you found enormously attractive. Yes, Pabst was very clever about uh, knowing whom I found attractive. The moment uh, Diesel came on the set for something or other, I don't think he'd given him the part yet. And he saw that we just adored each other. And I think that was the happiest scene of the whole picture. And this was very intimate there. It was only Diesel and I and the cameraman. And we had a lovely time between each scene. Here he is with a knife, which he's going to stick up into my interior, thrown on the table, and we'd be singing. And you would never know. You'd think we were, uh, it was really a Christmas party. garments of the street walker that she feels passion for the first time comes to life so that she may die when she picks up jack the ripper on the foggy london street and tells her he has no money to pay her she says never mind i like you it is christmas eve and she is about to receive the gift which has been her dream since childhood death by a sexual maniac i think you wrote that not vedican yes yes intrigues me is the Lulu in real life. To what extent, you know, having made the film, not knowing really what Lulu was about, um, to what extent has your life been, in a sense, a life of Lulu? Um, and I'm wondering about other people. Well, I have to go. Know, I have to go other on. Other actors. Now. Let me go on with the story yeah. and yeah. I'll get okay. to that. Well, we finished the picture the end of November. And uh, I returned to New York, and George Marshall met me. Now, mind you, he loved beautiful women, and he loved famous women. And my being a famous actress was part of his affection for me. So I got back to New York, and he said, now, he said, uh, they uh, opened up a new country, a new uh, 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 company, RKO. 
uh, Joseph Kennedy has formed the company and, and they want you to sign a contract. And I said, no, I said, I hate California and I'm not going back. And George was also a man who never said anything. He never complained to me about anything. He always went into action. Uh, he said, well, go over and see, uh, see them anyhow. So I went over and they said, well, we'll give you 500 a week to do. I think they wanted me to do a well-known book then called Bad Girl. I think finally they did it at Universal. And I said, well, no, I said flatly to them, no, I don't uh, want to do it. So George didn't say anything, but when we ba went back to the Lombardi, he had a couple of drinks and he gave me one shove and knocked me against the bed and I split my head wide open. I'd been wearing my hair off my head, so I put my bangs back. Well, then he said, well, what, uh, what do you want to do? And I said, I don't know. So uh, he went back to Washington and left me there in a huge suite at the Lombardi. And as usual, I was running out of money. Although I'd made an awful lot of money, it seemed to disappear all the time. And, of course, he would have to spend a lot of money on me, too, and he didn't like that a terrible lot. So somehow we got into a fight, and I disappeared with another man. And about that time, it was April, I got a cable from Mr. Pops, and he said, René Claire is making a picture, Prix de Beauté, in Paris, and he wants you to play the part. So come at once. He always gave me orders. So I, I uh, although I wouldn't go to Hollywood, I would go to Mr. Pabst. So I got on the boat, and I got there in May, and I went to get uh, photographs, still publicity pictures made with Renée Claire, who spoke very little English. She was a very small, demure, rather fragile man. I've never met him. I've always admired him enormously. And uh, he took me back to the hotel in the cab after the, we finished the photographs, and we were riding along the Champs-Élysées, and he said, look, you know, I'm not going to make that picture. He said, Dr. Pinez, so far, he said, they haven't any money even to start the picture. It'll be months before they get it together. He said, I am backing out, and if you're wise, you will too. I said, well, I have a contract, and it's all signed and sealed in New York, and George Marshall made it, so I can't get out of it. I'll have to do it. Well, exit. Uh, René Claire. So there I was holed up in the Royal Monceau with nothing to do. I didn't know anybody. And all of a sudden, uh, uh, Pabst appeared. He was on his way to London. And he asked me out, and this is a rather strange happening. He asked me out, and I went out with him and Dr. Pinez and somebody else, and uh, they said, where do you want to go? And I said, Chez Florence. It was a place with a colored band. And I went there every night. So we went there and we sat down and Pabs was displeased with me. I was drinking. His idea of a drink for me was a fruit salad in a, a pitcher surrounded by a little bit of champagne uh, and a Kaiser cup and such things. But I was drinking a brandy or something. And over across the way I saw Townsend Barton. He was one of the aristocrats of New York who'd gone into movies and wrote the script, incidentally, of uh, Love Him and Leave Him. But he quit then. He didn't care. He was rich. And there he's sitting with this great English lady, the Honorable Mrs. Daisy Fellows. Did you ever hear of her? No. <laughs> well, she had a yacht, and, and Townsend, of course, loved money, like all rich people. So I was very bored with people I was with. And I told the waiter to tell Mr. Martin to come to my table. He didn't come. And Mr. Pabst, in the usual German fashion, had given me a bouquet of roses, a cluster of roses. Well, finally Townsend came over, and he was a tall, blonde man, and he bent over the table. He said, I'm terribly sorry, Louise. He said, I couldn't leave Daisy alone. Whereupon I took this bouquet and slashed him across the face, leaving trickles from the uh, uh, thorns. Oh, blood? Uh, blood, of course. Oh, marvelous. And he, he was a gentleman, and, and he laughed, but Mr. Paps. I thought he was going to kill me right there and all the men sitting at the table from so far. And uh, Pabst said, uh, oh, I'm terribly sorry. He knew Townsend. Townsend, Townsend, that's all right, all right. He said, so Mr. Pabst grabbed me and took me back to the Royal Monceau. The next morning, he said, uh,